Hello everyone, this is Tim, and coming at you with another review on a game called Tanzia. It is a one-player action RPG, and it's published and developed by Arcanity. And I'd like to take this moment to say thank you to them for providing us a review code uh, to be able for, to allow me to review this before the game is released on July 19th, 2018. It's available in the eShop now, as of today, as of this recording. And you can pick it up for $19.99, or in the UK for $16.99. Uh, it comes in under one gig of space when you download it, and you can play it in TV, tabletop, or handheld mode. You can also play it with a Pro Controller. This game is rated E10 plus or Peggy 7. And now that I think I got all the, the general information out of the way, now I can start talking about some other things. Um, as you can see from some of the from the trailer here, and in some of the gameplay footage that I was able to take, uh, some snapshots and some video, to me it reminds me of an N64 game. Now I'll be transparent with you here i don't have that big of nostalgia for n64 as maybe some of you do so that's not the system i grew up with um i grew up with in uh, the super nes but i can see this is definitely one of those games so basically the story on this game or the general idea behind the story of this game is to solve the mystery of your grandfather's disappearance and prevent your home and your people from being destroyed. And basically, you gotta prevent it from being destroyed by this guy. Although this game came out a week after Octopath did, I actually see this as a good complement to the release of that game. So while mom and dad may be playing their RPG, Octopath, I think Tanzia is a great RPG for kids or for parents to play with their kids, especially because it could be a good intro the same way that maybe some of our N64 RPGs were a good intro for us. To me, this game, it really teaches the player well at the beginning of this game, allowing the player to move on to the next task. And when they're ready and comfortable, they can keep moving through each task. So far everything has been objective based that I've seen from learning how to use your abilities, weapons and items to going on quests and side quests because and because of that gamers at any level may enjoy this because it is good on the go RPG. Finish one or two quests and then put away until the next time. So not just good for the kids but for us parents too. And so far, so good. I've um, I've had a lot of fun with this game, and uh, hopefully, uh, well, just for the couple areas that I've been to, but uh, it's, I've had a lot of fun with this. And as you can see from this map, this is the this is the first screen that you can see that um, that I can that I sh let me back up here. This is the f this is the first part of the map that opens up when I started the game with a few of the tasks that I received. Uh, so this is a good point to start showing some of this these screens off to you guys to show that. And in this case, you can see there's the village in the center of this island, and then the journal will show you your tasks that need to be done. Let's take a look at some of the content and uh, information on how to use this game that's built into this game actually uh, using the manual which is the question mark there on the left side of the menu. Starting with the left stick will that is to move and then you can use your ZL and L to use the hot bar left or target lock then going to the center there, you can also tap enemies, objects, NPCs, or the hotbar to target and interact. So touch screen interaction. And then you got the ZR and R buttons for hotbar use or hotbar right. 
plus sign is pause, uh, the pause menu. This is where we can access the manual here. Then you got the Y, X, B, A buttons that do those actions. And A and B also do accept and cancel as usual in a Nintendo game for menu navigation. And then you got the right stick, which allows you to look It's your camera. And then the bottom bar, which you see those little gold boxes, those you can touch those icons to use your hotbar items as well instead of using the left and right buttons. So you can use buttons or the touch screen, which is great. And then of course you have the settings icon to change any of those controls. And we'll take a look at that in a minute. Remember those gold boxes I was talking about in the controls? Well, that's this, the hot bar. There's a classic mode, which I was showing you before, where you could touch it on the touch screen or use your L and R buttons to go back and forth. Or there's also a quick mode, which kind of reminds me of Zelda uh, games, the 2D Zelda games. Here are some combat best practices. Here's the alchemy portion of the game that the manual discusses, and this was a pretty cool, cool part of the game that I liked, where you could create your own potions by using these recipes that you could purchase, or you could just purchase the potions outright. So um, you could have them right when you needed them, but you could just go around picking up the parts you need to create these potions using the recipes and have the potions yourself and didn't have to use any of your coin to do that. Here's the questing and map area that I was talking about where it gives you your tasks for the game and it also mark on the map where you can go for some of the tasks to be completed. Again, I thought this was a great feature. I'm actually a task oriented person and thought this was a great feature of the game so I could come in, do a couple tasks, or depending on how big the task was, do a task, and then save the game and come back to it later. So I do like that aspect of it again. Um, I thought it was a good feature for both kids, first time players of an RPG, or even long time players who just want something to come in and out of to play. Whenever you're in a major area of a game, you'll have the totem poles that are in that area. And these are very important so that you can replenish your health and mana and be able to save the game. In that, And you can only save the game if you're near a totem. So it's very important that you find one of these. So on the top left corner of the screen, you'll see your stats. And this is where you'll see the red bar for your health, the blue bar for your mana, and the green bar for your XP. You also see some icons below your level and your uh, profile picture that will show like you're recovering when you're near a totem. In this case, that's what's showing in the manual. Or if you're being affected by an ailment or um, a spell or things like that, you'll see different kinds of icons like that pop up here. This is what I was talking about earlier where you needed to find a totem in specific areas that you enter, or in this case they're called zones. So they're divided into zones, the world you're in or the island, and when you cross over you'll see the name of that zone appear on the screen. And note here that it says that monsters cannot follow you from zone to zone. But keep in mind if you try to run away from a monster, however much damage you took off of them will heal. So keep that in mind if you go from one zone to another. I haven't gotten into this too much, but they're yet at least. But you can get gems. You can collect them by uh, just for what you do in the game from the killing monsters or from chests. But then you can take those gems and add them to your, your staff or your helmet um, to give different effects for increasing health or luck or or mana. Um, but like I said, I haven't really delved into this too much, but I'm very excited to be able to try that soon. And then I'm sure there's other areas as well. As you can see, there's two other slots that haven't opened up yet. As I get further in the game, I'll get more in the manual, it looks like. Now here's the settings screen that I was pointing out earlier to get today or earlier in the video and that was under the gear icon 
And you can see there's a lot of options you can change and even button configurations. And this is where you change the hot bar selections, your audio volumes, and the miscellaneous, which is your difficulty. And this is where you can change it from easy, normal, or hard. Another area I want to show you real quick is also the equipment selection page. This is where you can change all your different equipment and uh, or see all the things you've collected. And as you can see, I've collected uh, some sandals, some of the pa pander seeds. That was the flower I was talking about to help make other potions. Uh, some parts like the tusk there that you can see and the feathers. Uh, all can be used to create a potion or can also be added to the helmet that you see grayed out there. Uh, I'm looking forward to trying that when I get to open that up. Here you get to see me put some of these things into action. Um, some of the spells that I was able to cast to catch a boar and fire on it. Here I'm kept also picking up a couple plants along the way and after the kill able to pick up some loot and some items that the boar left. Here I wanted to show you that there's actually a portal system, a transport system using portals where you can select where you want to go and then the portal system takes you there. So there's a quick, once you open it up you can get where you need to go. Now here's my chance to be able to share some gameplay and part of the story with you guys. Just me running around, kind of, as you can see, chatting with the person here, and then getting attacked by this little creature and then attacking back, and continuing on uh, or acting on some tasks. So return to the guard in, in, with proof of Axorus's portrayal. So this is something I've learned along the way from that, uh, from a guard and found out that I did this step, this task. Now I need to reveal this monster that's uh, spying on this village. So it's me completing a task and progressing the story. So I need to confront this character and expose him as the traitor that he is. So as you can see, get ready to go confront him. And make sure I got the right things lined up. I'm going to expose you. And without giving too much away, I just wanted to leave it at that. So um, there are some funny things that happen there and some challenging things too from that. But essentially, that's uh, the beginning of the game. Some of the things that I've learned by starting this game and reviewing it. Hopefully you got a good sense of what this game is and can make the choice on your own whether you think this is a good pickup or not. Me personally, I think it's great. I think this is a great pickup for people who like the N64 style games like this, uh, even the Zelda game or two. Um, I, Like I said, I'm task oriented, so I appreciate the ability to go through the task list, my quest list, and get things done and do a couple things depending on how long they take and be able to set the game down. Uh, so far, I've been able to enjoy the story and see where it's going to take me next. And I recommend this game. Um, if, if the $20 is hard for you to swallow, maybe wait for it to go on sale or use some of your points towards it. I think it's a good pickup, especially for playing in between other games and or, like I said, playing every now and then um, between work. <laughs> <laughs> or play or whatever you choose so that's it for me for now for this game until next time this is tim signing off and check you later